What's up, Crate Nation? I am Adrian Jensen from ProductionCrate.com. Today we have a very special tutorial plan. I'm gonna show you how to fly around like Superman. Wait. We're not doing a flight tutorial today, right? Yeah, no, today's flying. We're, we're gonna fly around today. I feel like we haven't really prepped for the flying though. The worst that can happen is you have a great time. Yeah, I, th I thought flying was next year. You look great. I feel great. I mean, do you want to fly today or not? All right, I got this. Wait, maybe it was next year. Ooh, yeah, that's my bad, dude. I'm sorry. You're going to want to get that looked at. Okay, we got a level with you guys. This was not our first attempt at this effect. We tried to do it last week, but it just didn't work out. Oh, it was a real shame. The plan was to use some green screen footage of Chris in the air and use the puppet pin tool to try and blend it with the real shot of Chris hitting the table. Wait, no, it was a toilet. Oh yeah, it was a toilet. Why was, I don't know. It just didn't work out. Yeah, it looked pretty bad. We realized our problem was pretty much we, we were just overcomplicating things. Yeah, we're not afraid to admit our mistakes. So we decided to change the plan. The production crate family continues to grow. We have a new friend and I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but he's a real dummy. He doesn't have a name yet, so feel free to leave a comment below with your name suggestions and we'll pick one next week. Hurry up though, Twitter and Instagram are already ahead of you to to YouTubers. <laughs> They're ahead of YouTubers. You guys. Today the dummy is going to be Chris's stunt double. We dressed him up in this fashionable orange jumpsuit, but unfortunately he still has this pale skin, kind of like an Adrian color. So we also got this mask to put on him. Uh, you know what my favorite part about the mask is? is that it's uh, not even creepy, like at all. Not at all. So we took the nameless dummy up the stairs and threw him over the edge onto the table. We tracked his motion with the camera. When we finally got a landing we were happy with, we locked the camera off and we took a photo for reference. Next, we dismantled the dummy. His job is over, as is his life. <laughs> what? <laughs> now we just need a suit. Your clothes. Give them to me now. It's from Terminator. <laughs> okay. We stuffed the lower part of the jumpsuit with fabric and stuff, just whatever we could find. Sheets, t-shirts, that kind of thing. We used sweatpants and socks to keep everything together before putting on his shoes. Meanwhile, Chris got dressed up in the green man suit and we had him put on the top half of the orange jumpsuit onto the top half of himself. Now we have Chris with a real torso and arms, but with fake legs. Yeah, we just cut a slit in the back of the jumpsuit so I could slide the top half on and then fill the bottom half with the fake stuff. We had to position my real legs under the table and the fake legs on top of the table. Using that photo reference we took before, we made sure everything lined up pretty closely. Adrian then picked up my fake legs and I leaned a little forward and we dropped it together to try and add some realistic impact. We didn't end up using that, but I figure it's worth mentioning because uh, we could have. Yeah. After that's been shot, open up After Effects and import the footage of Chris dropping the dummy, who still doesn't have a name, leave a comment, and the footage of Chris lying on slash under the table. If you just line those up in time, you'll see that the effect is already starting to take shape. It just needs a little cleaning up. In addition to the footage, we also have a clean plate, which is just a still shot of the area with no people in it from the same camera perspective, which we'll use to fill in the parts that we remove from from the footage. Let's duplicate the footage with me in it and somewhat tightly mask around the green legs. Set the mask to be subtraction mask. Everything outside this mask is stuff that we don't need to worry about. We can also go ahead and mask around everything that's not gonna move. In this case, it's the table and the table legs. From here, you might think it would be just as simple as keying out the green, but unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. The green legs still cast contact shadows that we need to get rid of, so just keying them out won't be enough. Let's just take it 
section by section. We'll start by filling in the rest of my body. Fortunately, I'm wearing this awesome bright orange suit, so that makes this task super easy. We can do what's called a reverse key. I'll let Adrian show you what I mean. Sure, apply the key light effect and select the fashionable orange color. If we switch to this screen matte view in the key light effect, we'll get a black and white representation of the alpha channel. Alpha channel, whoop, whoop. If you switch the black and white values, changing the black to 100 and the white to zero, you'll get a reverse key. Now we're preserving the orange instead of removing it. Now we can move the black and white values a bit closer together to get a tighter matte. Now if we switch back to an intermediate result, we can see what we've done. The next problem to tackle is my hand is invisible. That's okay, just mask around the section where my hand overlaps and do a regular key to remove the green. Easy. Now we should be able to just turn on the clean plate layer and it'll fill in the rest. In our case, we do have one slight issue. You might not have this problem, but when we were filming in between the clean plate and filming the action, it looks like we bumped the table a little bit so it's not in exactly the right spot. So you can see the table legs doubling up a little bit. Clean plate fail. Boo. Yeah, so obviously you want to keep the tripod and the table and everything in frame as static as possible, but you know, we messed that up. To fix this, solo the clean plate layer, come up to composition, save frame as file, and save it as a still image. So we can clean this up in Photoshop, open up Photoshop and select the lasso tool and just draw a loose shape around the bottom of the table. Right click, select fill, content aware fill, and this will remove the legs. It won't always do exactly what you want, so you can undo and try again or reselect the parts if you're not happy with it and apply the content aware fill again until they are gone. I love this effect. It's pretty amazing actually. It it's so crazy amazing. that it even exists. I can't wait till they have this for After Effects, like moving camera stuff. It'll be amazing. You know what's coming? Yeah, what's it it's called again? Project Cloak. Project Cloak. Do they, they don't have a release date announced yet, right? I don't think so. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. Anyway, go ahead and save that and import it back into After Effects and just drop it over the original clean plate and it looks like our problem is solved. Back in our main composition, we now have the footage of the dummy who still needs a name. Leave a comment. Leave a comment below. <laughs> the footage of the dummy dropping and the footage of me on the table with a broken spine and broken legs, broken pelvis, broken ankle, broken fibia, tibia. Broken spirit. Broken heart. <laughs> and Aww. basically, we just need to try and blend them all together and blend them a little bit better in general. The first thing to do is draw a loose mask around Chris's layer and feather it out so we're only replacing the parts of the footage that we actually need to change and this will eliminate any popping around the edges. What do you mean by popping? Sometimes the lens will cause a distortion around the edges and if we're trying to blend these two clips together and we just have one replacing the other there's going to be a bit of a perspective shift around the edges but if we just mask out the middle you're not going to notice that as much. Oh, cool. We can change this layer temporarily on a difference transfer mode. This mode makes it so all pixels that are the same between two layers turn perfectly black and all pixels that are different turn other colors. We can use this to make sure we're lined up by trying to make the background as black as possible. Turn the background into a black round. Nice. When it's good, change it back to a normal blend mode. Next, we wanna make the switch from dummy to man a bit more gradual. Dummy to man. Dummy to man. I remember when I went through that, I was about yeah. 12 years old. <laughs> My switch from dummy to man was very gradual. <laughs> so that'd be like mummy is the in-between of man and dummy. Nice joke, bro. Thank you. <laughs> First, we'll duplicate Chris's layer and freeze frame it. Delete the mask and draw a new one just around the leg since the legs are the first part to hit the table and settle. Set a keyframe on those for the position and start working backwards to move the legs to match the camera move. We're going to utilize After Effects motion blur, but this might not match the motion blur present in the footage. This is easy enough to fix, so go ahead and open up the composition settings. Hotkey is Control K, Ooh. and go to the advanced tab, and here is our problem. The default settings don't usually match what the real footage looks like. You can play with the numbers here if you like, but in our experience, the best numbers are usually 90 for the shutter angle and negative 90 for the shutter phase. Now, the motion blur should play just right. We want to find the frame where the dummy's legs first contact the table, and that's 
that's going to be the first frame where we want to replace them. Adjust the mask to only show the top part of the legs for this frame because that's the only part that has stopped moving so far. Just try and make the dummy's body and the human body blend together as much as possible. Set a keyframe for the mask path and start advancing forward, adjusting the mask as you go to blend the two shots together as cleanly as possible. It's probably never going to be perfect, but that's okay. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Mm -hmm. We're going from dummy to mummy to man. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that joke die. <laughs> I'll cut it out as many times as I have to. <laughs> now that the legs are blended together, let's do that same thing with a freeze frame of my head. Now we're tackling this problem from both ends. That's gonna make it real smooth. On footage crate, do a search for dust and that'll bring us straight to the dust section. There's a lot of good choices here, but let's open up the shockwave subsection and we wanna use one of the compen effects for this. Hey Chris, what's a compen? Compens are really cool. Compens start with the C I and they have front and back components so you can take other things and comp them in to the middle hence the name comp in you i get, get it. it yeah pretty awesome Ooh. so we'll start with the back clip move it into position and time and add a tritone effect to recolor it we're just going to steal some colors from the scene we're also going to set this to a light and transfer mode to get rid of the dark edges and bring the opacity down opacity i'm not sure you're right opacity i'm going to draw a loose mask around the parts that should be obscured and just feather that out for the front clip we can just shift pan it to the back clip to inherit the position and scale properties and copy the color correction and opacity. Opacity. I'm pretty sure you're wrong. Oh my god. Pre-comp all this together. Since the shot of me is static, let's add some fake pan to make it feel more real. Scale it up and enable the motion blur on the layer and the comp. We want to make the fake pan seem more like a continuation of the real camera pan. Let's have the pan overshoot me a little bit and then pan back. We can also add a little wiggle expression to the position to give it a little more of a natural handheld feel. On the second number of the wiggle expression, which is the one that represents how much it actually wiggles, you can actually tie that to a slider, which you can keyframe to turn the wiggle amount down over time. But don't try and keyframe the wiggles per second though, that's just a mess waiting to happen. For the next shot, we had the camera orbiting around my broken body. The roto and king techniques are pretty much the same as the previous shot, but the clean plate technique won't work for this moving 3D shot. Instead, we have to use the 3D camera tracker to recreate the scene in 3D. The main part that we care about is the floor. So if you aren't getting enough tracking markers on the floor, if you're trying to recreate this effect, try using a levels effect or curves effect to bring as much detail into the floor as possible. Pre-comp it, track it again. After that's done, you can remove the effect to get your colors back. Use the tracking markers on the floor to create a solid in camera. Just make sure that the target looks like it's lying flat on the floor. We also took some photos of the floor looking straight down so we can make these into 3D layers and shift parent them to the track solid. You can move these around on the X and Y axis to get them into position, but be careful not to move it on the Z axis because that'll move it up and down and then it won't be on the floor anymore. Similarly, you can rotate it on the Z axis, but don't rotate it on the X and Y because that will rotate it out of position and it won't be flat anymore. You might want to just draw in some fake shadows as well. Make a new 3D solid stealing the shadow color that's already in the scene. Draw your shadows with a mask, feather it out, drop the opacity. Opacity. <laughs> Change the blending mode to multiply and adjust accordingly. And that's basically it for the effects. Thanks for not being a dummy and sticking around <laughs> until the end of the video. And don't forget the dummy still needs a name, so leave a comment below with your suggestion. I'm thinking Frankfurt the fourth. As am I. Don't leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> We're still looking forward to our goal of 26,237 subscribers. I can taste it. Right around the corner. Thanks for being a true creator and don't forget to make, make it, it awesome. awesome.